Welcome to episode 9 of Chinese Horror Movies Explained. In a country where horror movies are heavily regulated and censored, filmmakers need to find clever ways to get around regulations, and in this series, we explore how they did it. If you like this and are interested in seeing more, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you know of a Chinese horror movie you want us to look at, leave a comment below. And an obvious warning, but this is pretty much a spoiler-filled video. Watch at your own peril. In this episode, we will look at 2016's Seven Fright Nights. This movie is directed by Bin Yu, the first of his two horror movies, both of them starring the same lead actress, Mei Xing Chen who is yet another Chinese horror movie screen queen. I like to call her Popeye, and you'll see why as you watch this video. This movie also stars Shui Zheng, Ru Shui, and Hao Sun. The premise for this movie is pretty solid, and it appears that the movie starts off with an edited version of the trailer. It's a really weird way to start the movie, but obviously the filmmakers figured they needed to capture the audience attention, and fast. So here's the lowdown. Four young people, two boys and two girls, are tasked with the job of living in a house for seven days. If they make it to the seventh day, they will receive 10,000 RMB each, which is the equivalent of around 1,500 US dollars. That's it. Stick around for seven days and they're 10,000 RMB richer. To put that in perspective, the minimum wage in Shenzhen, where this movie was filmed, is 2,000 RMB per month. So you can see how attractive this offer is. However, there are a few rules. 1. They can't go to the basement. 2. They can't turn on the lights on the first floor and the oil lamp must be lit at all times. And 3. They must ensure the joss sticks on the prayer shrine never extinguish. The home is owned by a wealthy man who is spending the week in Hong Kong and he knows some weird shit is happening in this house. Let's take a moment to admire this house. It's beautiful. But things already get off on the wrong foot when the front door mysteriously opens. The man admits to his wife that the house was a bargain, which we all know is a warning sign. Cheap housing means long-term problems, usually in maintenance. First night in, and the creepiness occurs. Their daughter finds a skull. Although it's clearly fake, the parents react like it's real. <gasps> and a light fixture is smashed in the middle of the night. When Doldo, their daughter, goes missing, the first thing they do is look under the bed. But she's just sleeping outside. Clearly, the weather was better. She's a heavy sleeper and barely wakes up when shook by her parents. It's here we discover there is a mysterious person in a cloak stalking the house. And immediately, the family decides to bail. They couldn't even survive one night in their new house, but expect four strangers to survive seven? Fortuitously, four young hitchhikers are waiting in the middle of God only knows where, looking for a ride. Questions must be asked about how they ever ended up there, but Mr. Homeowner sees this as an opportunity. Can he convince these four suckers to live in his house? The answer is a clear yes, because cash is involved. And like the Wu-Tang Clan said, cream or cash rules everything around me. The four suckers, I mean hitchhikers, get into his car and he drives them back to the house. On top of looking after the house, he also wants them to document his stay. I think he's hoping for some steamy sex tapes so he can sell to an amateur site, but they're more clued up than he thinks. Here is the first ridiculous part. These hitchhikers don't know much about the girl traveling with them. And finally, after who knows how long, they decide to conduct introductions. The alpha male is Zhao Dahai. He is the responsible one. Sisi is a beautician, and her boyfriend is Chen Dou Dou, no relation to the little girl Dou Dou. He is a hairdresser. And finally, we have Popeye, known as Ying Zi. She has issues. Her nickname is Ghost Girl but I think Popeye is better. Another piece of the puzzle is revealed when Chen Dou Dou reads on the internet that the original owner of the house is a gambling addict who was driven crazy by debts and has abandoned the house. The house is haunted and this plastic bone proves it. Ah! 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 
As you watch the footage in the background, you're going to start to notice some really strange things with the rooms. And I think I know what it is. The movie was filmed in some type of hotel. There are a few dead giveaways, such as the bathrooms in each room, this mysterious sticker on the shower door, and the print in the towel. These exit signs to help when the power goes out, these safety lights in the pool, these stickers on the sliding door, the room number plaques on the doors, keycard consoles for room power, and this map of the floor layout slash hotel room rules card on the back of each door. More ghosts appear, a woman in red dipping her toes in the pool and combing her hair, quite normal things to do in the middle of the night, freaks out Yingzi and she puts her Popeyes to good use. Perhaps it's a hot night, because the thoughtful ghost then slowly starts removing the blanket from the girl's bed. It does it slowly, hoping not to wake them, but Popeye does. After screaming, they all assemble with death instruments ready to kill, when they discover a mannequin on the floor. And while the boys take the body of the mannequin out of the room, for some reason, they leave the arm behind. Yingzi, sorry Popeye, is going nuts. She hears a woman moaning, but no one else does. Not only is she the only person hearing things, she's also the only one in the group who can't swim, so they decide to teach her. Popeye reappears again in this scene as Sissy decides this is an awesome time to play a trick on her. You can see right here that Yingzi is making a visual memory of this moment. And when the time comes, you know she's just going to f*** hey! Sissy up. They are then visited by a lost dog, of which they all incorrectly label a ghost. There's a serious problem with their education if they consider this golden retriever to be a ghost. Check out this awesome POV shot of the dog, really emphasizing the whole dog seeing black and white thing here. More mysterious bones are found in the swimming pool, and then Yingzi gets pulled under the water. Another revelation occurs later that evening. A pregnant woman died in the house, and Yingzi thinks it's her voice she could be hearing. Big Yellow, the name given to the dog, wakes everyone up by barking at the door of the basement. Remember, they aren't allowed to go in there, so of course they must go in. And what mysteries are found within? Well, first a rat comes out. They enter the room, and you'll notice it looks almost exactly like Yingzi's room, just with one less bed and a few different bits of furniture. There are two dead giveaways it's the same room. One, the door plaque, which is there on the outside, and two, the TV box that's connected to the monitor, the lazy arrangements of cable, and its crooked placement. Anyway, the room is covered in crap and cobwebs. Remember, cobwebs are a great indication that something's been abandoned. Personally, I would have used dust. That's a little bit more realistic. Yet this room has no dust anywhere. By the way, pay some close attention here. There seems to be plastic bats and spiders in the cobwebs. Seriously. After they finally turn on the light, they notice a picture of a woman with her dog and automatically assume it's the same dog. A note is hidden in the picture. It's written by the wife of the man with the gambling debts. She's penned a letter to her husband telling him she's taken their child and has abandoned the house. So she's not dead? Just as a very unsexy sex scene is about to occur, Da Hai thankfully finds another plastic bone, this time a skull, to put an end to what would have been the real horror in this movie. <coughs> By now you're probably as bored of this movie as I was. Nothing exciting really seems to be happening other than this strange change of font in the subtitles. It's revealed that Sissy and Doldo have scared away the dog because they don't like it. And then Sissy decides she's had enough and wants to leave, getting into a van with a stranger, leaving Doldo behind. He wants his money, and he won't let Sissy cost him 10,000 RMB. They notice the car has covered license plates and realize something could be wrong. Instantly, they call Sissy, but she's already turned off her phone. She's really upset at everyone. Big Yellow returns with Sissy's unfashionable shoe 
and they head into the woods to find her. The orgasmic sounds of a woman can be heard. Popeye freaks out, but the boys are keen to know more. And what they know is that they're walking over a massive grave with bones everywhere. Do these bones belong to Sissy? Well, unless she has two heads, probably not. The next morning, Dol Dol decides to bail. He's worried about Sissy and hitches a ride on a motorbike being driven by the same guy as yesterday. He's even covered the plates on the bike. Romantically, it's just the two of them left and they try this whole sex thing again. Da Hai breaks the golden man rule. He's just slept with a crazy woman. She asks for a snack and he delivers. Although he gets the snacks with the dog confused and ends up delivering another bone to Ying Zi. So at this point, the question is, what is going on with all these damn bones? Why is the fridge full of nutritious skulls? I mean, I've heard they're nutritious. I don't really know from experience. Uh, just give me a minute. Finally, the ghost appears, and it does what everyone else wants to do. It tries to kill Ying Se, but we can see there are two faces. One is female, one is male. Who are these people? By this stage, Ying Zhe has completely lost her shit, and Da Hai is too good of a guy to just abandon her. And now it's time to reveal what the hell is going on. Did you figure it out? Yep, it's the guy in the garbage bag their mysterious taxi driver. The guy who gave them the job returns back in time to see garbage bag wearing freak beating up Dodo. Yes, he is the original landlord, the crazy gambler, and he's been trying to scare them out of his house. Annoyingly, Yingzi saves the day, but I'm still convinced she's the real crazy one of this movie. So I've prepared for you a little montage of her Popeye moments in this film to prove my point. This is a confusing horror movie in that while it feeds you the story as the movie unfolds, all the scary stuff doesn't really make sense. And certainly the locked basement room is the most confusing element of the movie. Why does the new landlord know about this room? And why has he never cleaned it up? Is he actually the real bad guy of the film? Is he the creditor that took over the house from the original owner, evicting a pregnant woman? And if so, why has he kept the room intact? We will never know the answer to this question, but I do want to mention this movie has some great music, but some really shit acting. And like always, the translation leaves a lot to be desired. Well, that's all we have for Seven Fright Nights, a movie with a great title that failed to live up to expectations. Because I am a sucker for punishment, in the next episode, I'm going back to what's familiar to me, Film Moon Movies and director Shile Lu. And I found it, his opus, Haunted Cinema 2, the sequel in name only to the 2014 original. And if I might say so myself, this could be his best movie. I know I've said it before, but this time I mean it. Subscribe to ensure you get an alert when it comes out. Thanks for watching.